Awesome. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Spay Rod Adventures. Um, I have another awesome guest on today. I met this guy, actually haven't met him yet until today. So um, I saw him on a Facebook group page uh, that was uh, Spay um, Fishing Oriented. And from what I saw on a video that he did as a videographer, I was so impressed with it as I just started my YouTube channel. I think it was about two years ago. And he had just made a quick little like three, five minute, um, three to five minute video. And I was just like, wow, that's so cool. So I wanted to bring Jay on to um, kind of talk fishing and videography from there. And he's a very humble guy. So hopefully I can get some stuff out of him. But with that said, Jay, welcome, man. How are you? I'm oh, good. Good. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really nice to meet you over this screen. And yeah, it's funny because, um, I don't really consider myself a videographer, but I'm, I'm really humbled uh, by being called that way or being uh, somewhat recognized. Um, but yeah, I'm a fisherman myself and I, I love filming. So I think that's uh, where our common interest is. So I'm really glad to be on this, this show. Definitely, yeah. Um, when did you get into um, fly fishing? Do you just single hand fly fish or do you do some spay fly fishing also? I do both, but my exposure to spay fishing, spay, spay rod fishing is very limited, I would say. I have to be honest. Um, I think I start, I mean, I'm, I'm a beginner for both, actually. I started fly fishing about, about three years ago now. Uh, I was just going through a lot in my life and I just, decided, hey, I'm living here in the Pacific Northwest. Why waste my opportunity? I mean, lots of things was, lots of things were going on in my mind. I just needed to have some fresh air, just forget about all those difficult things in my life. And fly fishing was my choice. And just grabbed a fly rod, just went out there. I didn't have, even have a mentor, so <laughs> I struggled a little bit. That's how I started. And then I just went out regularly, figured out, watching YouTube videos. Like, you know, probably a lot of people will know this guy, but Fly Fish Dan is somebody I, I really got inspired by. So, yeah, if Dan, you're listening to this, thank you so much for <laughs> being my internet mentor. And, um, yeah, I, I just have to go through a lot of trials and errors to at least get to where I am, but I'm far from uh, anywhere I can call myself experienced. I'm still learning a lot and I still consider myself a beginner. Right. I think we're all beginners, right? I mean, fly fishing is kind of a, a, a lifelong journey, right? It's a lot like life, you know? Yeah. That's always, the beauty of it. Yeah. yeah. You're always growing, you're always evolving. And if you've ever gotten to the point in anything that we do in life to where we feel like we're an expert, then that just means we've kind of stopped growing and we're not bettering ourselves or bettering other people from there also. Yeah, Dan's a cool guy. I, I talked to him um, uh, briefly through um, email uh, text about some uh, videography kind of advice. And he had told me that when you're doing a video, he said, you got to think of it as a story, you know, beginning, middle and end. And to me, that was kind of like, well, yeah, I know that, but what else do you have? <laughs> but it was it was super good information there. What do you primarily like to fish for? Um, trout, steelhead salmon, bull trout? What do you like? You know what? The true answer will be anything, but just because of the, the area that I live in and the type of water that I prefer, like clean water, remote areas where I'm alone. So that usually means there, there are going to be trout. So... Yeah, usually just usually in this area, it's rainbow trouts. Uh, but that, that doesn't mean I'm looking for a specific kind. I mean, sometimes in winter, just because we know there aren't going to be a lot of trout uh, feeding, so it will naturally become, you know, steelhead fishing. But I never was successful. Let me think. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I caught a, proper steelhead on a fly rod so that's something that you know until it happens i guess most people will relate to this you, can't, you don't really believe that that can even happen <laughs> so that's where i am with steelhead 
Um, when it's whenever it's salmon season, I love fishing for salmon too. Uh, just their strength and visually, <laughs> they're very picturesque you know, when you get them on camera. Um, yeah, so those are probably my main targeting species. That's good. Yeah, one thing um, I learned about steelhead was just the whole mental mindset of it. You know, because I was thinking the same thing. Like, do they even really exist? And a guide actually told – he is a guide. He's a good friend of mine named uh, Jordan Young. And he was telling me, he's like, every time that I go out and fish, because I had asked him a question. I was like, hey, man, what's your approach when you're out there on the water? And he said, honestly, man, every time I go out there and I swing – he said, I'm anticipating a grab. I go into the water knowing and expecting that I'm going to catch a fish. And I was like, I'm, I'm the yeah, but guy, right? Yeah, but what about this? He goes, dude, just keep it simple. Just every time you go out there, find a fly that you're confident with, fish it with confidence, and just believe that every time that you're out there, you're going to get a grab. And so, like, I've adapted that to my mindset, even on my most unconfident days when my casting's just going south. I'm wrapping myself up. I'm sticking myself with the, the shooting head and everything like that. I just, I'm like, okay, I'm going to catch a fish as I'm taking knots out and everything. But, yeah, man, I haven't gotten stuck with a, a steelhead yet. But um, humpy season's this year, yeah? Pink salmon. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so fun because they're pretty dense. Mm -hmm. And uh, unlike other species, there's not a strict regulation or, I mean, every fish, you, you have to treat them with care and love and have a mind of uh, mindset of protecting them. But pink salmon, they're, you know, relatively healthy population uh, compared to other species. So it's a little bit, it feels better when, when you're catching them, you know, even if I hook onto something, that doesn't mean I'm harming this one out of one out of only hundred fish that might be in the river. So it's yeah, that's um, a good point. I mean, uh -huh. you, you feel like if you come across a steelhead, you're going to kind of like sit there and handle it like fine China, right? Like, yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. I don't even want to touch it to get the hook out from there. <laughs> and that's what I like about pink salmon. Like I'm kind of like you, I started fly fishing about three years ago. So probably like 2020 and pink salmon, in my opinion, they're a great fish to learn on. Like one of the habits that I'm trying to break is when I get a grab is not set the hook immediately and just let them run and they're going to hook themselves. And then you give it a slight, you know, tug up in the air or side, whatever way the fish is going. And then you can go from there and pink salmon, you can catch them. I don't want to say abundantly, but you can definitely catch them in way larger quantities than <laughs> steelhead and coho and kings from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, pinks are fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it this year. Um, I primarily go up to like the Skagit and the Skycomish. Um, this, this will be the first year that I will be able to get out on the river with an actual raft. So I'm excited for that because that'll open up a lot more, uh, water and opportunities to where, you know, what it's like if you fished a pink salmon, you know, season, everybody's out there and it's so hard to get away from people. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you have a raft or do you primarily wade fish? I raft usually, fish? yeah, I, I usually wade and I, it's, it's funny. I'm still trying to learn. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I didn't have any good, exp um, good opportunity to go out and fish on a raft or I have a pontoon, but nice. I only use it for lake fishing and I didn't really go on a, a river because just no opportunity yet. Yeah. And then I love waiting so much that I didn't really feel like I, I needed to. But mm -hmm. it's an another area that I would like to explore because a lot of people say, hey, uh, if you have a raft and if you drift down the river, it's a completely different game. And um, you may not like, you may feel like you're losing the joy that you will get from just 
wading and walking through the river, but you can still do that while you're on a raft. So that's what people have been telling me. That you, you have you cover a lot more water with the raft, mm-hmm. and um, you'll probably have a much more successful day. And just it's, it's fun in a in a completely different way, is what I've been. Old. yeah that, that's right i saw you have um i always butcher the the letters on it but you have that orange colorado what is it the xlt or the xt what do they call that uh i think it's colorado xt if i'm that's right that's what it was i was just <laughs> trying to look it up yeah. i had that same raft man that was my well i guess technically it was my second raft i bought a raft off of um offer up and this will be good for anybody that's wanting to get a raft so the first raft I got on there, um, I went over to the guy's place and I didn't know what to look for. You know, like you said, I didn't have a mentor that was going to guide me and tell me what to look for and getting a raft. So I get the raft and the swivel seat was busted. And I told the guy, I was like, hey, you know, the swivel seat's busted. And he's like, oh, yeah, you can just call and, you know, get another one of those. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to turn this into a project. I'm trying to just put air in it and go float. So it had some other issues as I found out too. So I sold it to a buddy for like 50 bucks. And I told him, I was like, Hey man, this is the story with it. Just want to be transparent. If you want it, you know, I'm just going to give it to you. And he's like, no, I'll give you some money for it. what do you want for it? So he was cool. And he helped me out with that. But then I got into the same um, raft that you have. And that thing's great on the river, man. I've done the, uh, the Skagit river, the sock river, and um, the Skykomish River, and I've had no issues with that. So if you ever feel comfortable getting in any of those waters, man, that Colorado will do the job there. Wow, wow. I feel like I've been missing out on my opportunity. I, I already have the equipment to use, but I just, I was not <laughs> diligent enough to put that into actual practice. Yeah, just if you're, if you're uncomfortable with it, um, like one of the stretches that I I first started out on was um, it was like a little I think it's 2.5 miles of stretch and it's literally just like lake water on this section of the river but you still get the flow of the river right so you could kind of feel what the the oars are gonna do and how the the current's gonna take the pontoon and kind of you know move you to different directions from there and then from there I just kind of took a baby step up and you know, went to a further section up in the river that had, you know, a little bit of rapids, nothing crazy. And, you know, you, the cool thing about it is, is that we all know that those that are on rafts, you know, whenever you're in danger, point the raft or the boat to danger and just row back and you'll get away from that danger. So for me, I always just put myself outside like the big rapids from there, but I went just right on the outside so I could still feel them and then gradually went further and further in them to where I felt comfortable because I always knew my out if I needed it was just to, you know, pull back away from danger there. So yeah, find some, find a buddy to go with, man, get on the the group page or something and, um, you know, see if somebody will go out there with you and that'll help your confidence and it'll help you uh, feel more secure while you're out there. And God forbid something happens to you. You got a life vest. You got a buddy right there that'll help you out. But yeah, man, that 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 Colorado you have, that'll do great in that river there. I'm excited for you to try it out. Oh, wow. It's good to hear. <laughs> what I have is a, a good set of equipment. Yeah, just make sure you keep like a, uh, do you know what a K-pump is? K-pump. What is a K-pump? So a K-pump, it's K like king and then pump. Uh-huh. And what it is is, you put it over the valve of your pontoon and then it's just, it's just a pump. And so you can, uh, you know, pump the the pontoon up if it starts to lose air a little bit throughout the oh, day. While you're on the river, while yeah. you're in water. Uh huh. Yeah. I always keep one with me just in case, you know, like me or a fellow angler needs some air in their raft or something from there. It's just a good safety thing to keep with you out there. A novice question. I, I know. Yeah. The, the, there's a locking mechanism that doesn't let air out, but can it be dangerous because you're basically inserting something into the tube and while you're inserting it, air will definitely come out to some extent. And is that going to deflate it? And No, so what happens is the valve system, so like 
if this is the part where it sits inside the pontoon, you have your plastic part and then you have the part that goes in it, you push that, that, uh, that nipple like, and then mm -hmm. it can open up that valve and it escapes all the air. And mm -hmm. then in order for you to lock that valve, you just counterclockwise and it pops up. So that valve will basically do this and it'll keep the air there. And with the K pump, when you pump it up, what it does is it puts the air in there, but the air can't escape unless you mm -hmm. turn that valve yeah. all the way open and then it escapes all the air there. I see. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New concept. I didn't know you could fill up the, the bags with air while you're on the river. Yeah. Just pull over somewhere, you know, where it's sturdy and, um, you know, safe. And yeah, you can add air into it if you need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good it's a good tool to have there. Yeah, thanks for your tip. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. So talk to me about um your videography um you know journey and everything. How'd you get started into that? Yeah, um like it's nothing magnificent, but I do like filming. And how it all started was I didn't really intend to make any videos or anything like that. I just started fly fishing just because, like I said, there were there were a lot of things going on in my life and I just needed to clear my mind. So I went out, caught some fish, and then I wanted to capture that moment of joy. <laughs> so I bought a GoPro and I suddenly started noticing that it's really entertaining because, first of all, you get to replay that moment. But second, you get to see your performance and criticize yourself because everything just happens within a second when you catch, catch a fish when you even if you reel it in and then get it in the net your adrenaline adrenaline's rushing and you you don't really clearly remember what happened <laughs> so just looking at the videos i get to criticize myself oh this is what i did wrong i should have pulled it this way i should have um, managed it this way so that's how i started recording more and more and then when i got bunch of raw videos i started thinking hey why don't i just comp compile it to get together and that moment i really i i saw a few videos from uh what's his name um todd moen right oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he makes uh, incredible videos he's and, a legend yeah yeah just watching his videos it's just so peaceful and it just touches your heart yeah. So that's how I got inspired, not thinking uh, it wasn't anything like, oh, I want to get to that level. You know, I, I want to I want to be like him. It was more like I, I just naturally learned how therapeutic and how awesome it can be if you put all these beautiful videos together and throw in some music and you watch them. So I started editing things together and of course in the beginning it was there was a bit of a struggle uh but i started by just you know just connecting different scenes together different clips together and then found some free videos online i mean free music online because i don't want to spend money on something that you know <laughs> what would you not use doing it. for people that are listening what what did you use Oh, there are so many sites these days. What do you recommend? I personally like, um, what was that called? Um, sorry, I'm blanking out. Um, no, you're good. I use uh, Femora Pro and I. Oh, uh, for editing? Yeah, for editing. And they have, um, what's it called? The full title of it's called um, Wondershare, Familiar Wondershare Femora 12 is what it mm -hmm. is. And they have a little bit of the um, audio that comes with it. Um, and then obviously you have to unlock it from there too. But I know there's there's um, some good programs out there that you can actually buy. Um, and I know the challenge I had with the free stuff is that you have to go through so much to try to find something that's actually legit. That's why I was asking if you knew what you used to kind of help people um, cut the learning curve down as far as going through all that. <laughs> yeah. Some people use things like Premiere. I personally don't do any crazy stuff. So I use VSDC. That's what it's called. 
But recently I noticed that the latest version has some glitches. So I'm struggling with that. I'm just waiting for them to update the latest version. Uh, it's free. So that's one of the best part of it. Sorry, Paul. Apologize. Uh, I, I, I want to apologize. My phone's showing me low batteries uh -huh. um, notifications. So I'm just going to go and grab uh, my charger here. Yeah. Um, for audio, I can't remember what I started using in the beginning. Mm. Now I use uh, premiumbeat.com. Mm. So, okay. But once you get familiar with one platform, you, you keep using that same site, I guess. So yeah. um, um, this, does, this doesn't mean that's the only website that I recommend. There are just so many. Sure. And some of them will be more expensive than others. I just, um, because I was using so many musics, I just ended up signing up for subscription. So it saves money in the long run. So that's why I'm kind of, now I'm kind of dependent on that, that website. And that's what I primarily use. That's good. Do you use a Mac or do you use um, Windows? Oh, I'm a Windows guy. I'm, okay. Yeah. That's what I use too, Windows. I, again, I'm not very techie. So for mm -hmm. me, I like um, things to be simple. And from what all my buddies have told me, they're like, yeah, you probably just want to go with Windows from there because Apple's a whole different beast from there. Yeah, totally. So do you, what kind of equipment do you have? Do you have like just a GoPro, your phone, drones? What, what do you have? Yeah, GoPro is my main camera that I will always have. Some people mount it on their head. Some people have it on their chest. I prefer having it on my forehead just because okay. it, it tracks my real vision, right? Yeah. So if the fish moves to one side, I want to be able to capture it. If um, What are the other situations? I think that's the main thing. Fish moves around once they get hooked. So you want to be able to track it. Um, right. What are other things and then while i had this gopro camera somebody gave another gopro camera as a gift so i ended up having two so i have one on the side usually recording um like a bigger wider view of me fishing but then sometimes if i really want to go crazy then i would set up my iphone on a tripod so i can have a third view and sometimes if, it, if there's a lot of action going on I noticed that it's helpful because sometimes um, it's a, it can be a little bit um, there. It doesn't really show a lot of excitement if you're only showing the scene from one one direction, one perspective. So I think it's nice to have it that way. But at the same time, a more realistic reason why I like to do it that way is sometimes the fish you you get an amazing catch <laughs> the fish jumps out of the water mm -hmm. and it's not on the within the frame <laughs> sometimes you don't get it in the frame so having multiple options at least gets gets you a higher chance that you will capture something cool so yeah usually those three cameras will be my primary and then i have a drone as i was filming more and more i decided hey it's getting a little bit repetitive i want something mm -hmm. more i want something different so i ended up just buying a small drone which one did you buy because i was I bought the, yeah i bought the d dji is that what it's called the I think so, dji, the D, DJI yeah. mini or something DJ, mini two yeah there yeah. yeah that's the one i was looking at too it's like i think when i looked at it, it was like 500 dollars or something uh-huh yeah yeah but they're saying they're they're sanctioning the the um they've been talking about it a lot so i don't know how that's gonna affect the the market that just uh the the lay people market is it just mm -hmm. um, the government departments that are not using it i don't know but i've been seeing that on the news so i was like oh does that mean i'm not going to be able to buy new batteries if i if something happens to my batteries or chargers yeah so they're trying to do with with not letting um quote unquote the general public having drones anymore when you're saying oh, uh, just that company because it's uh oh 
it's made in China and, you know, because of the, um, the trade situation going on between two governments, I think they, they, they talked about sanctioning DJI and I saw it on the news, but I don't know how realistically just a uh, normal general population would be affected by that in the market. Yeah. Yeah, it's all he said, she said stuff, right? Until something actually gets passed. Yeah, I don't know how it's going. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the um and I and I forget the name of them, the uh they they're they're like a skinny little remote and they have like a stick and they record 360 degrees. Have you seen these? Oh yeah, yeah. My friend Mark, I saw him using it. Mark Stoidel. Okay. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing his name right here because <laughs> I was on another podcast and I uh, mispronounced his name, I think. But yeah, he, I think he uses that and I thought it was cool. But um, at this point, I, I already spent too much money on my, <laughs> on my gears and I'm not a professional filmmaker. So I uh, <laughs> don't want to have too many. Plus having more equipment means you have to charge all those batteries and you have to yeah. manage them. And I don't, I can't remember how many times I left either my fishing gear or my camera or something on, on the river. And usually, like I said, I'm usually waiting out to a remote area. Then I, I'm done with filming. I pack everything, get back to my car. I'm like, oh, shoot, I, I forgot to bring my camera. It's still sitting on, on the side of the river. So I had to wait back and recover it. <laughs> I was... One time I was in Olympic National Park. It was, I think it was last year, not last year, but 2021 on Christmas. So I was fishing there in Olympic National Park and it started snowing. So I oh, packed everything, crazy. went back to my hotel, then realized that I left my camera on, on the back oh. and it was pitch dark and it started snowing. And you probably know this, but it, it can sometimes be dangerous in that area. There was nobody there. It's Christmas. So who, what kind of crazy person would be fishing in an Olympic national park? Only the um, diehard fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have snow chain. So oh, I was no. like trying to measure the risk factors here. Is it worth going out Art. there, recovering my camera? Is it better to do it right now? Because tomorrow morning, who knows, maybe there will be too much snow. I won't be able to drive there. Yeah. So, but I went out there. It was so dark. And luckily, I had some uh, protective gear. So I loaded up my pistol and then went out in the dark. Uh, but it was honestly, it was a little bit scary. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And then successfully, I I. No, actually, I, I wasn't able to find the camera because it's oh, so no. dark. Yeah. So I had to come back. And then I think it was the next morning I went out and recovered it. Oh, Luckily, you did there find was, it, though. Yeah, I, I did find it in the morning. Oh, good. But, yeah, it was. I was lucky because it didn't snow that much. Yeah, how far did you have to um, walk to get to it? Oh, it wasn't a long walk, but probably... I had to just walk along the bank a little bit for, I don't know, maybe like hundred yards. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah. It wasn't too bad, but yeah. What kind of camera was it? Was it the GoPro? It was the GoPro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know some people that'll, um, they'll use like those nice expensive, like DSLRs, you know, or like Canons and they'll do those for like their video and, you know, pictures and stuff. And I mean, you leave one of those behind. Oh Ooh. yeah. You're going to be like, I'm putting the snowshoes on. I'm calling Scoops <laughs> and Rescue, and we're going to find that thing. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, What were you fishing for on the uh, – were you on the Olympic Peninsula? Yeah, yeah. I was just uh, steelheading that day. Nice. I took, took off uh, for – I think it was four days of just fishing. Oh, fun. So I was completely alone. I just, it was just kind of like a dream that I had in my, my mind. I just wanted to fish, 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 <laughs> just yeah. go to bed in the, this shabby motel. I'm staying in this motel, just wake up, go fishing, um, just eat some snacks, come back home, just go to bed. <laughs> and then next day, <laughs> repeat again. Did you stay in Forks? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. So I stayed in Forks and I covered um, probably like four different rivers. And you stayed probably at that little hotel. I think they just call it the Hotel Inn or something. That's right next to the little store. Hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a small motel. Yeah. Yeah. I went out there uh, last year. It was actually um, last year, this coming Friday, um, it was. I went out there on one of the rivers there with um, one of the guides out there, Leo Paul Johnson. And I stayed out at the, the little hotel there. I was like, Dude, this is great. Little hotel, inexpensive, grocery stores right there. Let's go. I just need to sleep here and wake up in the morning and go. It was a good time. I want to get back out there again. I miss it out there. Yeah, those are the moments that live in your heart forever. And you just keep reminding yourself of those good moments. That's what well, to, to, to echo what you were talking about, the whole, you know, video part of it, you know, you that's your library, right? Like you get to look back at that and you get to you get to feel those feelings and those emotions and, you know, the highs, the lows, the joy of it. And you get to relive that whole experience when maybe sometimes you can't go out, you get to go back and look at your video and be like, I remember that. That was a fun day. And you start yeah. to relive that whole moment as if you're you're there in it again. Exactly. And that's the reason why I keep making videos, not because so everyone will have different goals. Some people would like to become you know, famous or they would like to make a really high quality video. To me, it's more like, yeah, I, I like to do my best to make good videos, create good contents, but it's mostly for myself. And I just look back and like you said, every now and then if I play that, especially if you're just not having a good day and you watch that refreshes you and it just, you cannot, you can change your surrounding situations, but you can't change your happiness. You can, those happiness belongs to you. Nobody yeah. can take that away from you. Yeah. I always, I always tell people like I do a lot of reading that's on like personal development, you know, communication skills and things like that. And one of the books I was reading <clears throat> was actually by a, um, a pastor. Her name's uh, Joyce Myers. And she read this book or she wrote this book that had to do with feelings. And one of the things she talked about is that don't let your feelings and emotions control you. You control them. And she went on to talk about how, like, you're responsible for making yourself happy or sad. And if you find yourself in those uncomfortable moments, try to find the peace and the joy and the happiness in that to make those uncomfortable moments comfortable for you. And so that's what I always try to think about. Like I relate it back to fishing. Anytime I'm on the, I'm on the river and something bad happens or it's inconvenient or something just doesn't go my way, I just kind of throw my hands up in a positive way. Like, oh, that's fishing. And I try to adopt that to life too, to where it's like, well, that's just life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was one time I went out um, somewhere in, uh, where was it? Skykomish mm. system. That's my home river. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's a beautiful river. I not many it. fish. But <laughs> no, you're <laughs> right. There's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, par I parked along the river and then I just went to check out the river. It took probably five minutes or maybe less. Then I came to my car. I couldn't find my car. There was just a car that was like, that was, that had the windows all shattered so oh, i was like no. that's not my car <laughs> but it turned out it was my car that got broken into oh the, were you at yeah. the ben howard boat launch it was actually right next to people don't like mentioning this river uh, so we don't need to mention it then we don't need to yeah, mention it. yeah it was but i yeah, know that 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 boat launch that, there on yeah. the sky comish is notorious for getting um broken into and that's why if i ever float the river i bypass that and i i have a shuttle guy take my car to the the next takeout point or the next takeout point after that i it wasn't a boat ramp it was oh okay it was uh, kind of like a parking area i got gotcha. you yeah. yeah so you've talked about how you know getting on the river for you it really makes you just you forget about everything. It, 
you know, you had challenging times in your life and the river just sits there and puts you back at peace and at comfort. Kind of go into a little bit more if you want, because I love hearing this. Everybody I have on talks to me about like what the river does to them. What does the river do for you personally? Wow, that's a, that's a huge question. I mean, you know, river kind of, I don't want to sound too philosophical because I'm not. Oh, but... that's good. That's why I asked the question. It, it's a deep question and it's, yeah. it's different for everybody. Yeah, if you think about it, river just stays there for millions of years, millions of years. And the fish live there too. Mm -hmm. they, they, may, they may change generations, but they stay there for millions of years. And we, we just stay here for like a short, um, fleeting moment. We, mm -hmm. we are just here for at most 100 years and then we will disappear. Right. And we're it's and when we're out in the river, it's just so amazing because we get to share that eternal eternity, the time of a scale of eternity, and we're just standing there. And um, yeah, I mean, some movies like River Runs Through it just somehow portrayed this aspect of nature and the river and the fishing so well so we that's why we keep referencing these these beautiful movies but you know how he describes quoting some bible um mm -hmm. verses i don't think it's true bible is it bible verse is it true Bible verse? I don't yeah, think they, so. Yeah, they refer to um, scriptures yeah. in the Bible as Bible verses or Bible. Oh, scriptures. so it is. It is actual. Bible yeah. verse where he says, "Yeah, tiny little droplets uh, became rocks, and under the rocks there were uh, his words and stuff like that." And yeah, I think that, that. I mean, every art form will picture it differently, but that's the truth of it. The river is always there and it's uh, it's some something of a scale that we cannot even understand or even fathom it's just so huge and we're just we just get to cherish that moment while we're fishing there we become one and that's the magic of fishing particularly fly fishing because uh, you get so involved in that moment and you, you go out and just get yourself wet in that water and become part of it. And that's, that's the magic of fly fishing, I think. Yeah. My wife was just talking about that. Um, I had her on for my uh, first um, podcast and she's gone out with me a couple of times, but she was talking about what it was um, like for her the first time she got in the river and actually had waders on and was able to feel the power of the river and the flow of it and how it was just a whole magical you know life-changing moment for her because she's never experienced something like that and that's why i love asking the question you know to people what that means to them because there, it, it does so much for so many people it's so therapeutic and it just it does so much for for people i love it yeah that's good man you painted a good picture there i like that so do you tie flies at all <laughs> That's an area that I still need to explore, and um, I never really got into it. And I sometimes say that with um, just jokingly say that <laughs> if I start tying flies, then I'll, I'll I'll be spending hundred percent of my time just on fly fishing. <laughs> I'm already going out fishing a lot, uh, so one of the reasons why I never really got serious about it. But a good friend of mine whose name is Keaton. Uh, he he does some fly tying uh, sessions or classes. Nice. And he invited me over a few times. And I just couldn't make it, but I think one one day I'll probably join and get to find out other types of joy that is uh, related to fly tying. I I definitely like to try it. Yeah, I cannot you're... imagine. 
how amazing it would be catching fish with the fly that you tied yourself. Mm -hmm. That's just incredible. It's the next level <laughs> that I would like to try. It definitely is. Yeah. Like I, I'm just now starting to get back into a uh, fly tying. I would say a little more consistent. Like I said, we have um, a two year old Labrador. So when he was a puppy, you know, he would be in everything. So I couldn't have everything out cause he'd get into it. So now that I'm getting back into it, um, it's cool to see the transition. There's, um, there's great YouTube videos out there. And I don't know if you know, do you know the name Jonathan farmer? Mm -hmm. So Jonathan farmer is out in Alaska and he, um, used to be with OPST and he tied a lot of the flies for them. He is a phenomenal fly tire. He does uh, private classes, Jonathan Farmer does, and he does um, where you can actually do lessons with him on Zoom and he'll teach you to tie flies and break them down a little bit more. And then when he gets done tying the fly, he'll actually send it to you um, so you can actually see what the fly looks like. So he's a really good resource to um, look at, too, if you ever want to go down the road and actually get some type of like uh, I would can't say hands-on experience right because it would be via you know zoom from there but yeah i've utilized him a couple times and he knows his stuff really well man oh wow well, yeah i mean um yeah it's definitely something i'd like to do there are so many great people out there in the fly fishing community it's a whole universe you know <laughs> there, are, there are wizards and <laughs> there yeah. are uh, warriors and all these people that, that are almost like legends in this field. Yeah, I'm, there are so many people that I admire. They put in so much time and effort just to be become the best of best in their best in what they're doing. So that's so incredible. It's true. Yeah, they put a, a lot of time in there, and um, because of their experience and their willingness and their hearts to share what it is that they know people like you and I are actually able to um, get into the sport and do what it is that we like to do from there. So uh, I greatly appreciate all those people that have come and helped me out too. That's helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. So give me, give me a good fishing story of a fish you caught. Steelhead, trout, salmon, what, what's one story that stands out to you? Hmm. I think it's probably because it's the most recent uh, thing that happened to me. The memory is so vivid, too. I caught a decent-sized bull trout last fall. Nice. And, yeah, and it was totally unexpected because I, I was casting a few times didn't really get any response and i was dry fly fishing and then how many times do you see a i mean maybe some people will say no I, I see that a lot but at least for me it was a new thing that a bull trout would come up and grab a dry fly wow so, yeah i it was a, a time when i cast it a few times didn't work i was just ready to walk up the river so I turn around and then I suddenly feel this pull and it was pretty heavy. And I start stripping out my line. I was like, wow, what is this? It must be salmon. It, it can't be this strong unless it's a salmon. So then I started reeling in and it just looked a little bit different. <laughs> and I splashed it a few times, got it in, in my net. And then, wow, to my surprise, it's, it's a bull trout. And I only caught a, another bull trout a little bit earlier than that, probably a couple of months earlier. And it was a smaller one. So the first time I caught a bull trout that I can actually call a decent sized bull trout, probably a little more than 20 inches. And it was just amazing because bull trout was something for a long, long time. I, I only thought it, it's, it exists probably somewhere, but I'll, I might, I may never be able to see it myself because, you know, it's rare. It only has a very limited habitat area. Um, 
So I admired people, people's photos when they were holding this amazing bull trout in their hand. Um, here in Washington, it's almost considered sort of extinct. So that was really surprising. Uh, after that, I'm hearing some good news that they're doing much better than a couple of years ago. So people are seeing it more and more. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was probably the most memorable catch that I ever had. And then oh. ever since, yeah. Sorry, no, go, go ahead, ahead, finish it. What were you saying? It was. Oh, uh, I was just going to say. After that, I didn't really get to go out a lot. So that, that's another reason why it keeps mm. replaying in my memory. And, you know, it's one of those good times when you were having fun and you get to uh, remember and really cherish. Did you, um, were you able to get that on video? Yeah. So, nice. yeah, I made a video about this bull trout and, you know, it, I think a lot of people liked it. Um, yeah, it was it was combined with my personal journey too because bull trout kind of represents. I don't think it was very clear in my video, but my intention in the video was bull trout was something that that really inspired me because there's so many things in your life that you go after, and then. You fail and fail and fail. And sometimes you feel like, oh, this is something that I will never be able to reach. Uh, and a good example is my son because he was taken away four years ago almost. Mm. And I did everything I could to bring him back. Long story short, he was abducted to South Korea. And I got all legal justification. I, I got five court orders here in the United States. I got eight court orders in Korea. I, I got all legal justifications. I, I poured in all my energy, all my money too. And I, 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 it was, I gave in all of what I had. And it still feels like it's like a distant rainbow that I will never be able to reach. Uh, it, it may just exist in my mind. Maybe it's just an illusion that I can somehow bring back the happiness that I had with, with this little boy. Time is passing. He was taken away when he was three years old. Now he's turning seven soon next month. And it just, um, it just doesn't seem like I will ever realistically reach that. And to me, bull trout was something that, that was almost following the same path, but I, I was able to find it. And that's why it meant so much for me because there are so many things in life that didn't go well, but this stream was able to pro provide me with this little gift and happiness by having me catch a bull trout and actually get to touch it and feel it and and really realize that this this beautiful creature really exists in that water. And yeah, that was just a beautiful moment. And that's what I would try to portray in my video. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, thanks for being super transparent with that, you know, especially in an era and a time of, you know life where everybody lives by like instagram reels and everybody sees the beauty and you know the goodness of everything you know to be able to share that story there that's awesome because most people wouldn't be brave enough to share something so personal so i commend you for that and i love how you tie that into you know the journey of the bull trout where can people find your stuff um do you post it for um public viewing Oh yeah, absolutely. So I have a very humble YouTube website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Fishing Pacific Northwest, but it's such a small channel that you may not be able to find it very easily by typing the name. But this video was titled the, what was it? <laughs> it's been such a long time. Um, 
Is it a relatively um, new video? So if people go on your YouTube page, they'll find it like on the top two or something? Yeah. So okay. what, um, I try to name it in a way that people, it's easy to search. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what was it? Was it? Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll put a, um, a link in, uh, in the description there. And then <laughs> you said it's, um, you know, bull trout. So people can find it from there and then they can view it. And I think that'd be a, a cool video. How long is it? I think it was around six minutes. Yeah. Five, five minutes, six minutes. Yeah. I combined, I uh, talked about two different bull trouts that I ever caught in my life and they just happened to be the same year. And it was oh, a small cool. one. And I kind of threw that in the video too. That's how I started realizing, wait a minute, bull trout really exists. But this is a small one. Maybe if I keep fishing, might be able to hook into a bigger one, like what I've seen in other people's videos. So uh, yeah, and then uh, was that catch, that catch that I, I'll remember forever. Do you like bull trout? Is that um, a fun species for you to target? They're not known to be, as far as I know, I don't think they are very acrobatic. I don't think they often jump out of the water or do some crazy stuff like that. But they were strong. He was They're strong. Very strong and, for what they are. Yeah. And just, just knowing that background really helped me understand and appreciate bull trout more. The fact that these guys are just free-spirited fish. <laughs> they yeah. just wander around the system. They are sometimes found in the lake, sometimes in the river, upstream, downstream, sometimes in salt water. So, and then they there's a strict requirement for their habitats. They have to be in clean water. Sorry, somebody was calling me. Uh, so, just knowing that background, what how they how what their life cycle is what their what kind of creature they they are what their characteristics are and then they have cool spots the color is kind of dark they're different from rainbow trout that we always see so i think that's another cool factor so it's just a i would call it just a badass fish <laughs> they're aggressive yeah. they they yeah. are they're not abundant so it adds a little more prestigious feeling to the fish. Yeah. How often do you get out to go fishing nowadays? I used to go out a lot. I used to go out almost two, two days a week, every week, especially okay. during COVID because yeah. I was temporarily fired from one, one company because they, they were hit very hard by COVID. And they couldn't afford keeping me. So they said, oh, yeah, we're going to find a cheaper um, cheaper person <laughs> so right. they tried to negotiate with me and I was like it's not worth my time I'd rather go fishing so good luck and then um, I fished for like one year two years and then they called me back so now I'm working a little bit more again and I have some other obligations I have an amazing partner right now and I, I, I like spending time with her and that doesn't get that doesn't mean I'm giving up my hobby, but just because in in your life, depending on the phase of your life, you have different priorities. Mm -hmm. And um, and another thing is my son's situation that I mentioned. Things are moving really fast because uh, I I told you personally, but I was on a Korean TV show, mm -hmm. and this issue has become uh, a national topic now and not just me but there's another father that's fighting uh, for this top uh, related to this topic together and we're doing our best to make the public be aware of this situation we want to make sure that the u.s government does the right thing and do their best to bring back these american children so there are a lot of things fishing fishing really is still part of this because without fishing i would have never recovered from my wounds so to speak or yeah. the 
the moments that I was feeling a little bit low, I was I would not have been able to get out of it and become proactive and and fight really become more active in this fight. So fishing is still part of it. It will never stop being it. But um, yeah, just realistically, I'm I'm pouring in a lot of time and energy trying to help the situation. So um, recently I haven't been able to go out a lot, but whenever I have a day off and I'm not spending time with Morgan, then I would definitely go out. And I still enjoy this uh, the same way I used to. Do you ever take um, uh, guided trips, like um, river guided trips? I used my friend Keaton at some point. I used his service and he was amazing. He was, he was, he's a very passionate guy. He's, uh, I call him wholehearted person. He's, he's very truthful to what he's doing uh, in, in every aspect of his life. And guiding is no exception. He, when, whenever he has a client, you just make sure that that person gets a really good experience out of it. And sometimes that means catching fish, but, it doesn't necessarily have to be fish itself. It's more about what you learn and uh, the how you enjoy that day, having different experiences. So he was he he did a superb job, and I really appreciate it. And he, he used to guide on Yakima River and some Western rivers, some uh, urban rivers. So if anybody's interested, they can go and contact him. Yeah, what's his um <clears throat> let people know what's his uh his website? How how can they get in touch with him? Um what? his name is Keaton Zykowski. Okay. Zykowski. So, so people can just find him that way? I think you can find him that way. He used to belong to Ellensburg Anglers. I'm not sure if he's still part of them. Okay. Yeah. Cause I yeah, we haven't we haven't spoken about his guiding part of his life for a long time. So I don't know where he is in his life. Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. I was asking if you do um, if you like doing guided trips because you seem to have a real interest um, in bull trout there, and you like them. And I have a very good buddy that um, guides up in the Cedral Woolly area. Uh, Cedral Woolly area. And I call him the bull trout king, man. He knows bull trout very well. So, wow. yeah, if you're ever interested, just look up uh, Jordan uh, Treadwater. Um, and um, he's the guy that can get you into bull trout there. Yeah, I think I've seen him on Facebook. I mean, he's I'm, probably a big name. So Jordan's definitely, um, I wouldn't call him a big name, but he's a very likable guy. He uh -huh. He's earned a lot of people's respect in the industry. And he's just one of those likable guys, you know, where the minute you meet him, you're like, this is a cool guy. I like him. Yeah, uh -huh. we met on the river, I think, like three years ago. And uh, I told this story before on uh, another podcast, but we were across the rivers. And this was when we were both gear fishing. And I was like, man, this is a small river. I definitely don't want to cross lines with anybody. And I was like, you know, Hey man, if I cross your line, I'm sorry. And he's like, it's all good brother. And he had a spay rod over there. And that's how we kind of became friends. Cause I went over there and, you know, I showed him the very little bit of what I knew. And like six months later, you know, I meet up with him and he's casting lasers across the river. And I'm just like, dude, you got really good. Yeah. He's a really good guy. Jordan Treadwater young. Um, you, like you said, you've probably looked up and uh, you've seen him before too. But yeah, yeah give him a shout if you're ever looking. He he's uh, he's always excited to take people out and make make new friends. Uh -huh. And there are a lot of people that. So, <laughs> funny thing about me is I don't really keep track of who's friend of mine on Facebook. So sometimes I I'm surprised that some of the fisher fisher people fisher anglers <laughs> that yeah. I found on like Washington fly fishing group or places like that. Sometimes I'm surprised that, Oh, you're friends. <laughs> yeah. 
That's funny. Well, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you um, one question as far as um, the video part of things go. People that are listening that are wanting to get into just, you know, videoing their own um, journeys and stuff like that. What's some good advice and tips that you could give the newest person um, coming into it? Oh, wow. I mean, I'm nowhere in a place I can really give out advice as <laughs> sort of an expert view. Um, but if I like to, just because I, I, I've been doing it for a couple of years, I think, hmm, let's just keep it simple. I yeah. think one thing I realized about uh, filming and creating videos is filming filming is important but i think a lot of people will agree with this i think editing is almost as important as the clip itself that you get and i'm still learning and i think that's the most fun part because that really requires because you don't really have a lot of control over filming especially for fishing because yeah. you, you you can't give instruction to the fish <laughs> yeah. sometimes you can't even decide which angle you're going to capture the moment because you're just setting the camera and you move around and then if it's in the frame then you're lucky already so knowing that all the clips that you get is what you get editing is probably something that will really increase the value of the video i think that's good yeah um and that doesn't just mean the the editing of the video part, but also how you mix sound or music, and then how you wrap up the story. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm I'm still a beginner, so it I'm I just got my feet wet. So I think because of I'm a beginner, I think sometimes my my what I whatever I say could be more relatable to people who are also starting. So. That's how I feel. This editing part, just focusing more on that will be not only fun, but also increase the value of the video. That's good. And like if someone, you know, obviously someone would need like a, a camera or something, what what is something you would recommend to get, you know, like do you recommend people start off with their phone first to see if they like it, then go into getting a camera more like a GoPro or what would you recommend for someone to record starting out with? GoPro is good, but the main downside of GoPro is the battery issue. Mm -hmm. The battery only lasts for about an hour. And no, because we don't know when we're going to catch fish, yet we have to keep playing it. So that's one different factor than other sports like skiing, snowboarding. You can just capture the 10-minute coming down the slope on your GoPro, but fishing can't do that. So you have to really think about the battery issue. I ended up spending a lot of money buying multiple batteries and I'm, I keep charging it while I'm filming. Good. So unless you're committed to make that kind of uh, um, investment, I think the easiest way would be using the phone camera. And I learned this from Fly Fish Dan. He has something like a chest harness where you, he keeps the phone on his chest and he just uses the phone to... I have that emotions. too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I don't have that personally. I don't know exactly how that works. I'm afraid think, it's going to fall out though. <laughs> I guess that's one risk factor. There. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just phone, phone, phone camera has such good, great quality these days. It's, it's even better than GoPro when it comes to the video quality, I think. Yeah, me too. That's why um, I switched over from the GoPro to um the the um the cell phone because again i was using them for both like i had one phone here and then you know, i had the phone here and the camera here but i noticed like with the the phone i would just use the phone because i wouldn't have to zoom in and as much as i zoomed in with the gopro just my normal view from the cell phone was already giving me way better picture and quality from there mm -hmm. yeah well that's all great information man i appreciate it um is there any um, websites or links that you want to um, let people know of, like, you know, where people can find you, where they can see your videos and all of that? Just let people know. 
yeah, I'm still trying to <laughs> remember that video, but um, the video that I love the most is the video of my son. It, hmm. it was titled Until We Fish Together. Hmm. And um, if you can't find it, you can type in FFI, Fly Fishers International, mm -hmm. on top of the keywords. And you'll be able to find this video. It's about my son and what brought me to fly fishing. And if you can watch that and just remember, the reason why I'm sharing this is because I like to know, I like to have as many people in the world know that there's this missing child from Washington State that was taken to Korea illegally. And despite all the legal justifications, I cannot bring him back because of the flawed system. Mm. And this is not to blame any country or any particular person, not even the child's mother. This is not about blaming. But if, if he cannot return like this, there's definitely something wrong. Whenever there's something wrong, we need to fix it. The starting point would be uh, letting the public know, making people remember. I don't want him to be just forgotten and just be um, one person that nobody cared that just got screwed by the system uh, his story can be found on youtube as well it's called bring brian back is the youtube channel but you can also find facebook page bring back brian okay we we'll post more progress there so if you can go there that'd be great and then what is your um What's your YouTube channel? So people, if they want to check out your videos, um, tell people what that is again. Oh, yeah. That's called, um, sorry. Um, sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. My, somebody's calling me. Give me one second. Oh. Yeah. My, my webs, um, sorry. My YouTube channel is called uh, Fishing Pacific Northwest. Okay. Yeah. We'll put that in the link from there. And then do you have a Instagram or anything you want people to follow you over there? Check out your content. Uh, it's been years since I stopped uploading anything on my Instagram, okay. but it's also uh, fishing Pacific Northwest. On okay. Instagram. Great. Well, <clears throat> we'll, uh, I'll put those in the description there. Um, don't go anywhere. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody online here. Um, Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something about uh, videography or something of that nature. Um, enjoyed the stories there. And I will put all the links um, in the description there. So till next time, I'll see you all and make it a great day.